Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit. My name is Paul Anthony. And I'm CP. And today we're going to be exploring the question of why cigars are actually blended to form your favourite premium cigar experience. Mi nombre es Eladio Díaz, Master Blender Davidoff. Liga al, al año, más o menos yo hago una, entre 20 a 25 ligas diferentes en el transcurso del mes. Regularmente las pruebas, como yo lo hago, la mayoría de las ligas con 7 elementos, 5 tripas y, y capote y cap. Ando buscando siempre un diámetro entre 52 y 54 de diámetro. En realidad para nosotros es sencillo. Si Suiza necesita un puro específico, un cigarro específico, con líneas específicas de sabores, como tenemos el conocimiento de las 15 zonas que manejamos, para nosotros es sencillo, es como un chef, es elegir las hojas acorde con la coordenada que nos manda de Suiza. The typical cigar smoker doesn't get into the nuances of um hey, this cigar tastes lemony acid, or this cigar tastes uh, fruity acid, you know, like an apple. Sure. Right? And those terms is very hard for the typical cigar smoker to identify, and it's also very personal. But the typical cigar smoker, especially when they have a cigar that they are very loyal to, uh, let's say, for example, I'm smoking Davidoff number two. Davidoff number two is a very mild cigar. If I'm a religious smoker of this cigar, and I smoke it every single day, I know what the strength level is of that cigar. And I know my strength level and my comfort level. So the moment that that cigar uh, t is a little stronger or is a little lighter, yeah. I can pick it up right away. You get the nuance because that's, yeah. that's your blend. Yeah, so basically this number two is made from the bottom of the plant, 100%. Okay. You know, and uh, if for one, for a mistake, a leaf from up here would get in there, mm -hmm. and I'm talking, 10% of the blend, nothing, half a leaf. Sure. I mean, I would immediately be able to pick up the strength level of that cigar. Mm -hmm. And it would be a little stronger and it would be not my cigar. It would not be loyal to me. And that's something you're obviously trying to keep consistent year to year. So, I mean, if it's a slightly um, stronger blend, uh, will you go from different parts of the plant depending on the particular growing season and how that's impacted the flavor of the, the leaf and ultimately the result in cigar? You're completely correct. So on a sunnier year, um, that tobacco might be stronger, right? And if that tobacco is stronger, then I have to adapt the blend. The blend is not a formula of a certain percentage because if I keep those percentages over the different years and I use exactly the same percentages with the next crop that might be stronger, then it ruins my cigar. And I have to make sure to lower that percentage of that tobacco that is stronger or increase that percentage of that tobacco that is weaker. Or the other option might be instead of you maybe use the same 20% just to say a number, sure, but bring up the level. Okay. So there's different ways to play around with it, but the most important thing is that the strength level is always the same, and we're always using the similar ingredients, the same variety, same soil, right, and similar positions of the leaf. That way, it's always more or less the same cigar that you're getting. So look for a very consistent possible. flavor profile. And then the crops really dictate in how the blends come in together um, from that year. Yeah, so uh, what allows us uh, to be able to play around is that uh, we have inventory. So we have uh, over five years worth of inventory. And basically, if we have a crop that doesn't really match, we can also play around with different years and we can try to blend to that strength level or that flavor profile. They're very similar to what champagne does very similar to what champagne does. The tradition, the normal way to the classification of the, of the leaf and the plant have only three grades. Volado, seco, and ligero. But that means the seco is maybe 60% of the plant. Mm. Imagine. That means maybe at least eight leaves you put in the same grade. And you know that you have you talk about the leaf five and six. Mm. You talk the leaf 11, 12, it's different. Mm. But you make the blend according with that. And when they know that some cigars they have, 
high proportion of sex, especially something like David number no. number two, that that time was the best seller of David. And Dr. Snyder smoked every day the first cigar, that cigar. And they called me, Hanky, my cigar today is a strong, a stronger. What happened? What is the problem? problem? First, I divide the second into in two different ways. The first, that fourth leaf is seco. The next four leaf is visus. we different to maintain the consistency. Behind me, I have all the weighing tables for the creation of the blend. This is the blending department. And here, they're going to be weighing certain amounts of tobacco to create a bag that the blend was already created. And basically this blend uh, is going to be given to the cigar roller and he is going to uh, have the tobaccos already separated. Okay. We do it in a bag of 40 ounces. How many uh, cigars would 40 ounces of filler make roughly for a uh, like Robusto size? More or less, uh, and this is where the, the word depends comes depends, in, yeah. but more or less calculate about 40 cigars, 40 Robustos. Could also be 40 cigars, 40 Toros. Okay. The thing is that if, if it's, that, if it's a know. very uh, strong blend, these 40 ounces are gonna be made out of less leaves because yeah. they're, he they're heavier tobaccos. Yeah. If it's a very light blend, the 40 ounces are gonna uh, be made up of tobacco that's lighter. So there's, it's gonna be for more cigars. So you have here, one, two, one, two, three, four, five tobaccos. And this basically, each tobacco is crossed and weighed separately so that when the cigar roller gets it, he's basically getting uh, all the tobaccos already separated and already more or less positioned of where they have to place it in their hand. Hay liga que uno la sueña, que uno la, se la imagina, ¿no? Cuando yo iba para, eh, para Ecuador el martes pasado, le mando la descripción de una liga al, al jefe de galera con un capote específico que me daba la nota de país y andaba buscando esa combinación de elementos con ese capote específico. Automáticamente yo sé cuando buscando, ando buscando uno, una nota eh, normal, o sea que yo sé que me va a aportar. Entonces para mí es muy sencillo, pues yo conozco los elementos, gracias a Dios. So this is actually our data of Asturias. Oh, so this is time. the blend for data of what we had last night. So you see here that it has two tobaccos from, uh, from Brazil, which is a Cuba and the Matafina that we're talking about. The Cuba that's the binder is not gonna be here because it's only filler. And then you see that it's, there's also some Piloto, uh, some tobacco from Bonao, and then some San Vicente. The tobacco from Bonao is a hybrid that we have, which is 119. And then we have uh, San Vicente that basically rounds off the side. So you have your sweet Cubra, your spicy Matafina, and then Piloto that hits in the back, and then the sides are the San Vicente and also your hybrid. And basically this is a very easy blend where 40 ounces is basically divided by five. It's 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%, 20%. It's eight ounces each leaf. They just rotate yeah. independent. And depending if they're doing, uh, because we have a huge list, if they're depending if they're doing the Corona Gorda or the Robusto or the Toro, they're gonna basically make a different amount of cigars. Sure. If they are supposed to make, for, let's say, 40 cigars, and they're making me 45 cigars, that means they're putting too little tobacco in the blend and the cigar is gonna be too loose. So if they're making me 35 cigars, then they're putting too much tobacco and, this, and they're basically wasting tobacco and the, t the cigar is gonna be too tight. And potential draw issues. And potential draw issues, exactly. So at, basically at that moment, this becomes also a quality control. The, sure. For every 40 ounces that we make, depending on the size, they have to give me a certain number of cigars. And if they're not giving me that certain number of cigars, there's an issue. Sure. It could be whatever. It could be the quality of tobacco we're giving him. It could be how he's rolling it. But there's always an issue that needs to be fixed. If That's another, if someone's making 500 cigars a day, there's 12, roughly 12 additional quality control checks on the amount of filler that's in a particular cigar. And it gets countless. The amount yeah. of quality controls is ridiculous. So I mean, every, every single stage is another fail safe, another fail safe, another fail safe. And these 40 ounces, not only are the tobaccos weighed, separately but then they get weighed all together and at the moment that it leaves this this room 
into the next place. It gets scanned, there's a ticket, it goes into a system, and it was weighed, and then it gets to the next place. And when it's received in the next place, we weigh it again to just make, double make sure that we're getting the right uh, weight or the amount of quantity of tobacco. What's really cool is that, like how we've discussed, the blend can change. Maybe in the future, it doesn't have to be 20, 20, 20, 20, and the, the blend can be maybe 25, 25, and then you add up to 100, but you play around with the ratios and the weights. Sure. So this cookbook in six months is irrelevant because some of these already changed. Sure. You know? And it's not consistent if you're always keeping exactly the same blend year after year. Sure. Okay. Gracias, Super. Gracias. Regularmente siempre se hace un cigarro medio, no un cigarro que esté en el, esté en el top. Uh -huh. No es porque sea mi gusto predilecto, sino porque se le da un puro para que sea agradable, que no se, que no se que tiene que ser no invasivo. El cigarro tiene que estar equilibrado, balanceado. Si no tiene esas condiciones, no es un puro agradable para mi concepto. So what we have here is basically a nice demonstration of all the types of tobacco. What's cool is that you get to play with them, you can smell them if you like, but also you can see the leaf structure. You yeah. can see that they're very different. So again, this is all filler, with the exception of this, that this, came, this one came from the binder room. Okay. So it was brought back here to be worked on as filler. But that's Mexico, that's Mexico. You got here Honduras, Olancho and Hamastran. You got Pelo de Oro, that's Peru. Yeah, we got a little bit more spice out of the Yamasa. Yeah, Yamasa, especially that 133, that was the Puro de Oro yeah. line, was basically uh, a much spicier one. You get your Matafina oh, and Cubra. That's for the Escuro as well. Yeah, that's, that's the Escuro, so you can see that this is bolder, which is your spices. Look how thin this one is. So this is for your sweetness. And then you also have your Ometepe, Jalapa, Condega, and Esteli. So you got here your, all of your Dabra of Nicaragua. Should be stronger than yeah. those. And then you have here your typical three tobaccos that we actually tasted yesterday, which is Olor Dominicano, San Vicente, and Piloto. Piloto. Which is the cigars that you guys were rolling with. Nice. That's the, basically the special R, the Grand Cru blend, are these types of tobacco. All have such a different, unique nuance to the, the smell, mm -hmm. you know? And that's just in the smell without lighting it up. Yeah. You know, it's... Combusting it. it without combusting it. This is yeah. all just raw leaf. And as you can see that the structure is different, the feel is different, the smell is different. Well, we're not tasting it yet because I've been smoked though. But it translates over easily. You can understand how it's going to taste. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a cool presentation. Yeah, this is great. Yeah. Well, Charles Philippe and I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please also check out the full length documentary of how Davidoff makes cigars. And down here, there's a full playlist of our whole Dominican experience. <laughs>